The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you Today's Word for August 11, 2017. I'm teaching a series entitled As Jesus Is, and I'm going to continue to flow in that vein on today. This is As Jesus Is, Part 14. But before I get into the Word, I just felt led this morning to share with you that my wife, Isabella, and a team from RIP Ministries, Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries, they're going to Haiti tomorrow on a missions trip. We do this every August. And uh, this year, I didn't really do a, a funding campaign for this trip. So we, we used funds from our general fund to be able to cover this missions trip. And this morning, I was just led of the Holy Spirit to give you an opportunity. So, I mean, this is a blessed trip and, and lives will be changed. God will be pleased. And so what we do when we partner is that we just give people an opportunity to be a partaker of that blessing to be able to partner with us to get in on what God is doing. So if you want to get in on what God is doing on this missions trip, that's going to happen. Uh, the team will leave tomorrow. They'll be there for a week, for eight days. So if you want to get in on that, go to ripministries.org, ripministries.org. You'll see there you can go straight to the Haiti page or the donate page and partner with us. When you're giving, you'll see a drop down. It'll say Haiti Missions Trip 2017. If you want to partner with us, do that. And if you're in the United States and all the donations are tax deductible. Now let's get into the word. So uh, I've been teaching from 1 John 4, 16 and 17. And this morning I was led to add to it Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. So let's look at these two scriptures and let's get into the word. Here we go. The apostle John said in 1 John 4, 16 and 17, and we have known and believed the love God has for us. Now, God is love. Now, he that dwells in love dwells in God and God dwells in him. And herein is the love of God made perfect, that we may be able to stand before God on the day of judgment. Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. You'll be able, the, perf the love of God is perfected in us when we actually have the boldness to stand before God on the day of judgment, not because of our strength, not because of our power, not because of our goodness, but because of his, because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And then King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter three and verse 11 from the Amplified, the Bible says, God has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. There's a time and a season for everything. He goes on to say, he has also planted eternity. Think about this. God has planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart. It is a mysterious longing, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Yet man cannot find out or comprehend or grasp what God has done. His overall plan from the beginning to the end. Man can't find this out. Man can't find out the plans that God, that God made for us from the foundations of the world. Man could never find those things out, but they can be revealed. They can be planted. So God takes eternity and he plants it in our hearts and our minds. And then it creates this divinely implanted sense of purpose, uh, working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. So with that, with those two scriptures... I want to share something with you that I'll be dealing with on today and also in the next message on Monday. So the Bible is clear that God made plans for us before the world began. The challenge for us as humans when we're born and we start to live our lives is I'm going to share six things with you. This is our challenge. Number one, to accept Jesus as Lord, <laughs> because our journey begins with Jesus until until you accept Jesus as Lord. You don't even you're not even in position to kind of walk down. Uh, this path to your purpose to become the man the woman God called you to be number two to receive the revelation of God's plans because God made plans for us before the world began then we must receive the revelation of those plans and we receive the, that revelation that insight God you know peels back the the veil so that we can see what he planned for us from the world from the foundations of the world he does that through the Holy Spirit number three we must then fight the urge to feel unworthy <laughs> and to disqualify ourselves before we ever get started. Number four, we must then renew our minds to believe what God believes about us. Number five, we must then wait on God's timing, right? For the things that he revealed to come to pass because there's gonna be a certain timing. God made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. And then number six, 
Once we do all of that, and God says, now it's time, it's time, son, it's time, daughter, we must then launch out to experience what God revealed so that we can uh, become what we beheld, right? So that we can see the manifestation of what we saw. Now, those six points are easier said than done. And I could just take those six points and teach on this thing for weeks. But what I was led to do this morning um, is to just kind of summarize those things. If we can understand these six quick points that I shared with you, we understand that the pursuit of the manifestation of all of that becomes the joy of the journey of walking with Jesus. It becomes the joy of the journey of, become, of becoming the man, the woman that God has called and destined, designed and desires for us to be. So I'm going to summarize the first three points on today and the next three points, the last three points on Monday. So for today, here we go. It's Friday. Let's close out the week strong and head into the weekend strong. So I got the, those first three points is what I'll talk about. Let's go. Number one, your journey down the path to your destiny begins, from a human perspective anyway, the day you make Jesus your Lord. Some confuse salvation to be the destination, as if the day you accept that Jesus is Lord, that's it. I'm saved now. I'm going to heaven as if that is the destination. Salvation is not the destination. Salvation is actually the starting point. Once Jesus is your Lord and you're filled with God's spirit, you are then and only then in position to start down the road to your purpose. Prior to salvation, you lived your life without the Holy Spirit. So you were not truly in position to receive revelation from the Father because God is a spirit and he speaks to us spirit to spirit. Once we have his spirit living on the inside of us, now he's speaking to us spirit to spirit and the Holy Spirit reveals the plans God made for us from the foundations of the world. But un until you're born again, until you have the Holy Spirit, you don't have that spiritual connection. So you can never really become the man, the woman God called you to be because you can't do this on your own. This is not, this is not human. You, you can't just stumble upon God's best. It must be revealed to you. So, so once again, this is the starting point. Yes, the day you accept that Jesus is Lord is amazing. Yes, you were filled with the Holy Spirit and now you're saved. Yes, the, the reservations you had to hell are canceled. And you have new reservations and that's, that's to heaven. So yes, all of that is great. But God doesn't just want you to make it to heaven. He wants you to enjoy the ride and he wants you to make an impact in this world. What impact? The impact that you were destined to make from the foundations of the world. All right. That was number one. Number two, once you're born again and God's spirit is living inside of you, he then begins to reveal those plans to you, the plans that he made from the foundations of the world. And the Bible tells us in our text for this morning, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, that God literally plants eternity. It's like he's taking the plans that he made for us in eternity and he's planting those plans inside of us, in our hearts and our minds. Now, God does not reveal everything to us about our future because the, the truth is we can't handle it. Most of the time, we have, to be able, we have to be processed to be able to get to the point where we can receive uh, what God wants to re reveal in whatever time and season. So we got to be able to be processed to be able to handle the revelation. And the longer we walk with God, it, it, this, this revelation becomes progressive. So the more we walk with God, the more we process, the more he's able to trust us with, the more he's able to tell us. So God reveals things to us in increments and he gives us enough revelation to be able to maximize the season that we're in. He doesn't tell us everything, but he does give us the revelation required to be able to maximize the current season and stage that we are in. And as we we uh, receive it right as as he does. He gives us this glimpse of eternity and is planted in our hearts and our minds in time. The Bible says we read it today. This glimpse of eternity planted in our hearts and our minds in time creates a divinely implanted sense of purpose. Which nothing under the sun, but God alone can satisfy once God's purpose is implanted in our hearts, we will never be satisfied until we become what we saw. We will never be satisfied 
until we become what we saw. God reveals it, we see it, and then we are never satisfied until we become what we saw. God reveals it, we see it, and then we live our lives in pursuit of that. We live our lives in pursuit of becoming what we saw, and we will never be satisfied until we, we become what we saw. And then when we become what we saw, then God reveals another glimpse and God gives us enough vision for the next season and the next stage and the next level of our lives. And, and so that's how he does it. And, and so we're living our lives season by season, level by level, stage by stage. And that's how we become the, the men, the women that God has called us to be. He's giving us this insight, this wisdom, this revelation, this knowledge, this understanding. He reveals it. We see it. And then we pursue it. And then little by little, little by little, we become. So it happens in increments and stages. And that's how we arrive ultimately at God's overall expected end for our lives. Number three. And finally for today, when God reveals his plan to us or his plans, you know, whatever he reveals, they are so good. That as humans, most of the time we feel unworthy, which is why we see example after example in scripture where God tells someone to do something, which is what he planned to do in their lives from the foundations of the world. But the humans respond with no nothing but excuses. Oh, no, God, I can't do that. Oh, no, God, I can't do this. Uh, uh, woe is me. Who am I? Why would you do this through me or that? And so why? Because in this world, we're programmed uh, to think a certain way. In this world, we say things like nothing in life is free. Everything in life must be earned. If you want something, you've got to go out there and work hard for it. No one is just going to give you anything. So when God starts to reveal things to us that he wants to give us, that he wants to do. Now, once again, grace is not a license for laziness. I'm not saying that you're not going to have to work hard. You are going to have to work hard. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that you can't even start the work until you believe it. In the world, people say, well, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. And in God's kingdom, God says, well, you will not see the manifestation of it until you believe it. So once once God reveals it, you got to. That's why you got to believe what God believes about you. That's why you got to see yourself as Jesus is in this world, because when God reveals that thing, you have to believe it first. And you got to fight the urge to feel unworthy. You got to fight the urge to disqualify yourself before you ever get started. You have to see yourself becoming it. And then you're in position to go launch out. And then really, you can only do it in God's timing which is what we'll deal with on Monday. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith and head into the weekend strong. You ready for this? Here we go. Say, Father, this is a year of great victory for me. You made plans for me before the world began. You reveal your plans to me in increments. The incremental vision I receive is enough to maximize each season and each stage of my life. I received the vision and I walk it out in your timing. Everything happens at just the right time for me. As I maximize one season, you give me revelation and vision for the next. So season by season, stage by stage, level by level, I walk out my purpose. Living this way, I am convinced that I will arrive at your overall expected end for my life. Because as Jesus is, so am I in this world. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side of the website. There's a big subscribe button. Subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, Share this message on your timeline. Share this with your friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit like, leave a comment, and share this on your social media. It's Friday, so let me just tell you that we also have uh, uh, this word in Spanish, palabra del dia.org. We have an app. Go to any app store and search for RIP Ministries or Rick Pina or Rick and Isabella Pina Ministries. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Rick Pina, and you'll see Rick and Isabella Pina pop up. You, we have a Vimeo channel. Just get the word. If, if you do podcasts, then go to the iTunes, uh, go to iTunes and search for us and you'll be able to download the podcast. But get the word by any means necessary and let's share the word and tell everyone everywhere that God loves them and that he wants to use them because he is so good. God bless you.